pack a box of chocolates. Down, David. Seems that envy is my sin. Oh, what's in the box? Well, hello, beautiful. We can't stop here. This is bad country. What's going on, movie lovers? It's been about a year. Thank you so much for tuning back into Ball's Rounded Reviews. Um, like I said, been about a year. Has some changes around the set here. Um, some new lights, some new backdrops. Looking to change some minor things on uh, how the channel worked. But pretty much all the same. Talking about movies. Um, of course, uh, the good, the bad. My favorites, your favorites. If you want to comment, like, subscribe, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, that'd be, of course, excellent for the new year for 2022. Um, the first video for this year is going to be... Um, a top 10, a favorite, a best of 2021, my favorite, my best of 2021. There will definitely be, I know for a fact there's two on here that are hated by some people in my circle. And I'll try to defend them. I already have, but it hasn't worked. That's okay. Um, I'm looking forward to getting back into movie reviews for this year. Some really cool stuff coming up like the Batman, um... A lot more stuff. We'll talk about that later. But hey, let's get into this. The top 10 of last year. Remember, my favorite. This is very subjective to change for you guys. Of course, I know that. You have your opinion. But like I said, let's roll. Let's get this and uh, let's have fun. All right, guys. Up first is number 10. And that's going to be a movie everybody seemed to love last year, um, no matter who you really talk to. And that's going to be Zack Snyder's Justice League. Many different reasons why this movie it was on a favorite list of who you talk to because you, you rooted for Zack to get it done. And uh, with, the, with the hashtag, make the Snyderverse and all that stuff online, social media, got it done. And thank God they did. Because, you know, even though Zack Snyder might have some stinkers when it comes to story, how he tells a story, I have always loved his visual flair how he makes films in his mind and then puts them on screen for us to see. Uh, it started with 300, and to see this film come to fruition was just amazing. And uh, number 10, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Okay, guys, up next is going to be um, number 9, is a movie that a lot of people didn't see. A matter of fact, they didn't see this one or number 8 when I asked them about, about it. Um, but number nine is going to be The Last Duel, uh, made by Ridley Scott, stars Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, um, Kylo Ren, <laughs> I like to call Adam Driver, uh, Kylo Ren. And, you know, I understand when I'm being told a message, and of course this was a 14th century Me Too movement message, but it was done with great flair, great style, and of course when you have a master like Ridley Scott behind the camera, you know, what can really go wrong? He's made some bad movies, but most of Ridley Scott movies, of course, like period pieces, are typically amazing. And uh, this one is. A cool story about this one is when we watched it, it was snowing out big time. It was New Year's Day in the morning, and almost every scene in this movie has a big toasty, roasty, poppy fire with the big fur coats, and it just made me and Amy feel really cozy when we were watching it, and then of course the end, um, there is a fight, there is a duel uh, to the death, and think Gladiator, that gruesome, that brutal, in your face, probably one of the best fights I've seen last year, especially when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, for sure. The last duel, number nine. Number eight, Last Night in Soho. Again, nobody really seemed to have seen this movie last year. Um, kind of like The Last Duel. I implore you, watch this movie, directed by Edgar Wright. I put this on number eight because the story might be a little convoluted, but the way he meshes the genres together, the horror, um, the elements of the roaring 30s and 50s and, and 40s, um, the, the suspense... The thrills, the camera work, and especially Edgar Wright is known for his editing. And some of the stuff he does with the choices of the movements with the edits at the same time is amazing. And when I look to edit films, 
He's the first person I think of, and this film hit that notch, hit that right chord for me when it comes to that editing style, and I loved it. So, number eight, Last Night in Soho. Check it out, and of course, the people on screen, they're beautiful. So, that's another reason to watch it. Okay, so, number seven. Number seven on my list probably would have never been watched if it wasn't for this story. Um, I'm down here flipping through the channels on Amazon Prime, uh, looking for something to watch. And I say, hey babe, I'm going to watch a science fiction horror movie. You want to watch it with me? What's it about? Oh, well, about a girl having sex with a car. You would. So uh, I didn't watch it that night. I woke up the next morning, and sure as shit, my one-year-old daughter had bought it from Amazon Prime. So I had it. <clears throat> I had the girl does the car movie in my queue, so I watched it. Yes, that's right. In this movie, a girl has sex with a car. You're like, Nick, why would you like this movie? Blah, blah, blah. You need to watch it just so you know what I'm talking about. The camera work is amazing. Amazing visuals. Performances are top-notch. This girl got found, I do believe, from a social media um, video she turned in to Hollywood or her producer, whoever it was. But when I say I was just hooked to every scene, that is exactly what happened. And uh, so I'm glad my uh, one-year-old daughter bought it for me um, because it is now seven on my top 2021 list. Tea time. Watch it. Okay, number six. Remember when I told you there's going to be movies on my list that people are going to be like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Here's one. When I first started watching this film, for about the first half an hour, I was like, what am I watching? What is going on here? This should not be happening with this director. And then when I realized the director was doing it on purpose, I was like, I get it. Give me more. Yes, James Wan purposefully made a throwback campy film you would find in the bottom of a barrel in like a um, Backwood Alley video store made in 2002 at the very, 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 very bottom. And it is magnificent. Once you realize that James Gunn made on purpose a campy film for us, our whoring, whoring, whore-loving us, it's like, oh, thank God this movie is made. I love James Wan for it. Malignant, number six, is amazing. Love it. Thank you, James Wan. Okay, number five. Number five is Nicolas Cage's highest rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes. It's like 96, 97, and that's even with the critics and the audience together. Rarely does that happen, especially when it comes to an art house film. And Pig is just an exceptional movie all around. Especially when you realize it's from a first-time director like my age, around 40. I'm like, oh, that's why I want to make movies. That's why I know. It gives me hope. And this movie is about Nicolas Cage. Um, he is a mushroom hunter, and his pig gets stolen at night. And uh, he goes on a revenge hunt. But it turns into something that's very more tender and more subtle and more personal. And it has something to do with food, too, so that's why I like it. And also, Nicolas Cage, oh my god. He, ah, maybe Academy Award nomination this year? Let's hope. But number five, Pig. If you haven't seen it, watch it. So number four is going to be the second film on my list that I told you would be divisive. And that's going to be The Green Knight. Um, the Green Knight, to me, is just magical. It, is, uh, it sends you off to a place you don't realize where you're at in the theater. You kind of forget about everything else, and you just kind of melt into where you're, wherever you're at. And people are like, well, I don't know. It's kind of boring. Well, I get that. But looking at art can be boring. Looking at um, a painter paint can be boring, but it also can be mesmerizing. And the images on screen, to me, are mesmerizing. 
I'll give you a little story about this one. Uh, me and my friend Kent Calvetti went to the theater together with this, uh, with this film. And when we walked out, of course, we say, how'd you, how'd you like it? And he literally looked at me and said, quote, I think I just had a life event. If that explains anything, I think I just had a life event is how I would explain the Green Knight. Watch it at least once. Give it a shot. Number four, the Green Knight. Okay, so the top three um, of last year. Here we go. And it really wasn't, really wasn't hard to pick a top three this year. Not at all. Um, number three for me is a film that almost nobody saw. Nobody. Um, I think it was on Apple Plus, but watch out for it in the Academy Awards. Guarantee it'll be there. And number three for me is Coda. If you've never heard of Coda, I'll just tell you this right now. It's about a deaf family. They're all deaf, except for one person. And that one person is a beautiful singer. Masterful singer. But guess what? All of her family members can't hear her sing. So when she wants to go out and fulfill her dreams of being a singer, they really don't know why. And the film explores the deaf family coming to terms with her wanting to fulfill her dream. And here's a really cool story about this film. When Amy and I were watching it, they started off doing the sign language. And I said, I think this might have subtitles when they're doing the sign language. And Amy said, yeah, I couldn't find them. I said, okay. So the film went on. And the acting is so good, and the film is so real, that I didn't even need subtitles to understand the sign language because of the reactions from the other actors. So if that says anything about this film, how masterful the acting is, that should say it all. I didn't need subtitles, even though I didn't know what they were signing just because of the acting. Masterful. See it. Number three, Coda. Okay, number two, um, you guys, everybody loved this film. Number two is Dune. Thank you, Denis Villeneuve. Um, I have loved every single one of your films from the very beginning. Continue to make amazing films. The reason Denis Villeneuve is one of a kind is because he is a master class at making an art house film and a Hollywood film mesh together. The people that love Art House, the people that love Hollywood, both love his films. And also, a film is not complete without a score, the music, the sound. And I'm telling you what right now, Hans Zimmer, with the score from Dune of last year, gives, it just gives me shakes and shivers thinking about it especially in the very beginning of the film. Some awesome stuff that I've listened to just doing work. It's truly amazing. So number two is Dune because of all those reasons. Of course, watch it. You probably already have Dune too. Okay, time for number one. Oh, or wait, I'm going to give you guys some recommendations besides top ten. Um, they are going to be Ghostbusters, check that out. You probably, probably already have. Um, also, Suicide Squad was amazing last year. And uh, t check out Tick, Tick, Boom with Andrew Garfield on Netflix. That's an amazing movie as well. Tick, Tick, Boom. So, number one this year. Can you guys guess? Do you know what it's going to be? I bet you can. Of course, Spider-Man. No Way Home. Um, what can I say about this film without ruining it besides... It was everything I wanted it to be and more. And I know that might sound like hyperbole, but that is absolutely what I mean. Everything about this film is what I needed at the time, what the whole entire theater needed, obviously at the time, because they were hooting and hollering. One of the best theater experiences I've had by far. And I can't believe it was made. And it was made. I mean, yes, the first hour might not be the best. Yes, it might not be the best Oscar-worthy winning, you know, movie of the year. 
But the last hour of that film is one of the best hours, I think, in film history, in my opinion. Without spoiling anything, there are certain characters you think are going to show up just to be there for nostalgia. That don't happen. <laughs> I love you, Marvel, for doing that. Um, it was an amazing movie. Spider-Man No Way Home, I can't believe I'm saying it, is my number one film of 2021. Bring it on, some more Spider-Man. Uh, Tom Holland, you were amazing. It was a, it was a pretty good year of, for movies, I'm not going to lie. Um, with the pandemic and all the COVID bullcrap going on, they got some good stuff done. Um, I'm looking forward to doing some more movie reviews with you guys. Stick around for more movie reviews in the future. Um, I'm going to make them shorter, more tighter, um, less negative, you know, try to st talk about good stuff. Be positive with your life in the new year. Listen to one another. And thank you so much for hanging with Ball. Um, you guys have an excellent day, and we'll see you later. Thank you very much.